Hello YouTube, Rob here. It's my first ever video so I wanted to do something quick so I figured why not uh, show off my Battle Beast collection and talk about the lighting that I used. Now I was actually out visiting family around Easter time in Ohio. I decided to make the quick trip up the road to Boardman to Renegade Toys. And if you've never checked them out and you're in the area, make sure you do so. Uh, it is one of my favorite local toy stores to go to. So, you know, I was talking to the guys and asked you, like, you know, by any chance you happen to have any Battle Beasts? And they said, actually, we have a collection, you know, uh, that we're trying to sell for somebody, if you're interested. So they brought it out from the back. I took a look at it. Um, and in this collection was 51 figures, all complete with their rub sign and their weapons. It also came with two of the play sets. It came with the Blazing Eagle and the Wood Beetle, along with two of the Chariots. Um, the Deer Stalker and the Bighorn. <clears throat> so we negotiated a price. They actually reached out to the owner and we settled at $900. So I, you know, I had an idea what they went for. Did a quick math in my head. I'm like, all right, 51 figures average 20 bucks a piece. You know, that's a thousand right there along with the two play sets, the two chariots. No brainer for me, you know. So instantly I came home with a starter Battle Beast collection. Now, if you're not familiar with the Battle Beast line, uh, it was imported from Hasbro, I believe in 1986, from Takara Tomy in Japan. Um, the Battle Beast had a gimmick where, you know, there was three different elements, uh, fire, wood, and water. So it's kind of like the game, you know, rock, paper, scissors, where fire beat wood, wood beat water, and water beat fire. Three series that I'm focusing on, and the first series had 28 figures, the second series had 24, and the third series had 24. All right, so starting on the top shelf here, I have the Blazing Eagle. Now, I don't have these arranged in any particular order. It's just kind of, you know, what I thought would look cool. Um, I know some of the collectors out there will actually do them by, you know, the series, the organized them as series one, two, and three. That's one option. The other option is to actually organize them by element, you know, as far as the fire, the wood, and the water, which I'm probably, that's the route I'm going to take. I think once I have all 76, you know, I'll apply the heat, hopefully all the rub signs work, figure out which ones I had, and then kind of kind of uh, arranging by there so you know we've got the blazing eagle on the top and so moving down the second shelf here now like i said originally the shocking shark and the terran tiger did not come uh, as part of my you know original collection that i bought so i have added them recently so i just kind of had some figures like i said that i thought would look cool you know the octopus the crab so so that is the Got the, uh, I think I see a guan up there. So that's the shocking shark. And moving down to the third shelf, um, I have two of the chariots, like I said, the deer stalker and the bighorn. And right now I just kind of have some of these set up on an acrylic riser. Now you can pick these up off of Amazon. They're not expensive. Uh, great for displaying vintage and or modern figures. And this is kind of where I have some of my variants. Um, <clears throat> you know, you have like the walrus there with the painted, the unpainted tusks. The gorilla, you know, is done in orange and red. And there's a lot of other variants out there as far as, you know, just slight color variations or, you know, um, you know, paint applications, just different colors. So there's what I have as far as the, the second shelf. And moving down, here we have the Wood Beetle. I said with just some of the guys, like the uh, the mouse there, he has like painted and unpainted teeth. That's another variant. So, kind of a cool line. So when I bought these, I was kind of, you know, I was debating, I'm like, what can I display these in? You know, most of my collection I have on open bookcases. You know, I had heard a lot about the Detoff cabinets from watching other YouTube videos and collectors out there. <clears throat> so I figured, you know, why not? Uh, wife and I hopped in the car. We made the, you know, hour and a half plus trip down to Pittsburgh, which is the closest Ikea. Now, as far as the lighting, I did, 
use the uh, from other videos and reviews, uh, like the four pack, they're like 50 bucks at Home Depot or various places. You know, four individual strips. Uh, I didn't like them. I, I tried, and basically what happened was I, I don't feel that there was enough cord in between each light to, you know, run up in between the shelves. I think the first one, you know, that I had underneath here, when I had it wrapped up the side, I actually think I broke the connection. The light quit working, took it back. You know, got another one. I don't know what happened with the second set. Blew a fuse, and I'm like, you know what? I'm done. So this is what I went with. Let me grab the box here. So I went, I uh, got these at Walmart, okay? Better Homes and Garden. It's 16-foot tape light. They are basically self-adhesive, so, you know, you just basically peel the back off and stick them. Uh, then they're color-changing. They come with... Let me see, I'll grab it here. Come with remote control. So it's got all kinds of, you know, different options that you can do as far as changing the color, making them flash. But the best part that I liked about these was that they were actually uh, cuttable. So yes, you can cut these at every, looks like just under four inches. So <clears throat> that's what I did. Uh, I did add the weather stripping, you know, like some of the other reviews said on the Detoff case to help prevent the dust. But basically all I did was I drilled a hole through the base of the cabinet to run the, the power cord up through. And then just peeling the back and carefully ran the lights all the way up the side, across the top, and pretty much back down the other side. And you can see right there is actually where I cut the lights off. So I debated running it all the way across. I decided just to leave it there for now. So to me, the, the biggest advantage to these lights, uh, <clears throat> you know, doing it this way was the fact that they're not, they're not taped to the shelves. Now I don't plan on adjusting, you know, any of my shelves in here. Uh, I know some of you guys out there that collect the hot toys and the statues, you know, you, you can adjust the height of the detoffs by, you know, buying some clips. I don't plan on doing that, but I thought, well, down the road, if I ever did decide to adjust the height of the shelves, now the lights are fixed to the shelves and then I got to tear them off and, and redo them. So, um, that's all I have. So feel free to leave me any comments down below and thank you for watching.